Hello guys, and we're back after another video from Pizza T. So we're gonna watch Mr. Nightmare Sleepover Stories Volume 3. Let's get right into it. My cousin Tyler and I used to have sleepovers all the time when we were kids. Always at his house, though, because he had the cool house. Back then, before cell phones and modern video games, kids actually used to do normal kid things. Like, for example, we both loved to play hide-and-seek at night. One time when we were nine, both our parents were going out for a night in Atlantic City. So they had my other cousin, Tyler's older brother Joe, keep watch on us. An hour into the night, however, Joe told both of us he was going out and not to tell Mom. Tyler and Joe would commonly do this because it mutually benefited them. Tyler loved having the house to himself, and Joe hated staying home all night. By the time he left, it was already a little later in the night, like 9 o'clock. We had our dinners and decided it would be a good idea to play hide-and-seek. Their house was honestly massive, so it was always a lot of fun. I was hiding first. We started in the basement where Tyler would count. We had a rule that we couldn't use any house lights, only flashlights. Our reason for this was because it just made it cooler. I tiptoed up the stairs, then up the next flight of stairs to the upstairs of the house. The upstairs had a whole other living area, along with three bedrooms. I chose to hide in one of the unused bedrooms. I buried myself between two big beanbag chairs and a blanket. I left the door open to avoid any suspicions. I heard creaking coming into the room, lively footsteps. Tyler was now moving around the carpeted room. I could hear him. He went over to the closet and opened it. Then he opened the second closet. Silence. Then he walked over to the other side of the room and he started opening the drawers to the desk, rummaging through them. Suddenly, I heard Tyler's young, innocent voice calling my name up the stairs in a kind of mockingly tone to try and scare me. My mouth opened and literally started twitching when I put two and two together. I lifted the blanket slightly over my head to see what he was doing, but it wasn't Tyler. I knew right away based off the person's height it was a much taller, fully grown man. It wasn't Joe, and it wasn't his dad. He perked up like a statue when he heard Tyler's voice, and I saw him duck into the corner of the room, behind the small piece of wall that sticks out there. Tyler entered the room with his flashlight and kept saying my name over and over, slow and drawn out like. I was praying his light would not reach over to the corner of the room. His light landed on me under the blanket. He may not have even seen me, but I still willingly came out and acted all defeated, fake laughing and everything. I told him he won, put my arm around his back, and started nudging him out of the room. I kept the conversation as natural as possible, until we were halfway down the stairs. That's when I dropped the bomb and told him there was someone in there with me and nudged him to run outside. Being the scared nine-year-olds we were, all we could do was run next door and ask the woman living there to call the police for us. She did without hesitation. I still remember the scene vividly, of the cops pulling up, running into the house, and five minutes later, ushering a guy out in cuffs. It was a great feeling, even as a nine-year-old. One time I had a sleepover with my friend Mike on a cloudy dark night. There was a slight drizzle and occasional lightning. We were 13 years old. Mike lived on a dead end with one other house next to it. Across the street was a field surrounded by trees and his backyard led to a forest. Mike and I were up late, much after his dad went to sleep. His 
dad's room was all the way upstairs. Mike's room was on the lower level of the house by the den. So the den was where we would hang out mostly to just play GameCube. A knock at the backyard window interrupted our game. The blind was shut so we couldn't see outside. Mike ran to go open the blind. I told him not to, but he did anyway. As he did, I shut off the TV and lamps because I didn't want to be seen. Now that it was dark in the den and slightly brighter outside, we could slightly see outside and see that there was nothing but grass in the visible distance. A small flash of lightning confirmed that there was nothing but wet grass in all directions. We sat in the den with the lights off for a while, just waiting for something else to happen. We kept our eyes on the window, expecting somebody to come up to it. Eventually, after what felt like forever later, we turned the TV and lamp back on and pretended it didn't happen. The blinds were open this time, and every so often I'd take nervous glances at the window, just making sure nobody was out there. After getting so absorbed in the game and forgetting to take a glance at the window, there was the second set of knocks. Mike and I both jumped up and looked at each other. With all the lights on, we couldn't really see outside. At least, not until the flash of lightning outside, just for a brief moment, lit up the night sky, long enough to show the person who was standing at the window. This time we ran upstairs to Mike's dad's room and pulled him out of bed, screaming at him to get up. The three of us ran out to the backyard in our coats and shoes, turning the backyard light on on the way and also taking along flashlights. There was a buildup of mud next to the back wall of the house where the dirt patches were. And in the puddles of mud were heavy, distinct footprints of boots. We followed the footprints as far as we could, but as the mud faded away, so did the footprints. We searched high and low for anybody. We even went around front and then out into the woods. There was nobody. We all went to sleep, Mike and I in the den. I couldn't sleep though, I was terrified. Of course, the blinds were shut to the window and back door now. Just as I was anticipating it, there was a third set of knocks at exactly 12.15. I remember that number. Me and Mike both jumped from the couches and ran upstairs to his dad's room once again. This time he ran outside alone and told us to call the cops. He returned soaking wet, having found nobody. The cops came for nothing because there was really nothing they could do. The knocking didn't happen again, though, and I also never slept over Mike's house again. Ever since that day, his den just always gave me the creeps. I used to be close friends with a kid named Chris. He moved away across the state when I was eight. Since we never got to see each other anymore, I got my mom to agree to drive me all the way over to Chris's new house in the country for a weekend sleepover. Pulling onto his property, I already knew this was the perfect place to do anything outdoorsy. It was a decent sized house with nothing but woods in all directions. The first day we didn't do much because I got there late anyway, so we just talked for a while and watched a movie. A couple of times I'd think that I was hearing sounds coming from below the floor. I would ask him, do you have a basement? 